to hi this is Christian I'm just going to uh, go through the uh, globsec a little bit today um, some of the syntax and how to program it so uh, of course everything is fully documented or being documented uh, we're on build 23 now version 3 uh, if you just open the description everything that I'm going to show you now and more is all clearly uh, uh, written there as a reminder for you um, also the uh, manual that is available um, in the shared folder is uh, also going to be pretty useful um, it's a kind of quick start manual but it also has some examples of the same sort of thing that I'm going to show you today which is just to show that the syntax for defining sequencer rows of global events is actually very straightforward and you can be programming it in no time in, even if you don't have much scripting experience if you have a lot of scripting experience or then as you start to develop more um, the power of the sequencer will soon become apparent so first of all um, I've just opened the an example of the new build 23 and I'm just going to show you how to define the the, the global row that is the the gates or the stages of this this instance here of this particular global sequencer so that in common uh, throughout all of these uh, row defining fields this is the gates one if you hover over it with your mouse again you'll get a uh, inline help with uh, that I've written to to help you along the way and you'll see that it has this format first of all you will create um, a, a name for the global event that will be generated by the row that you're about to define. So my sequencer will generate events um, which I can refer to elsewhere in the Kima signal flow. So in this case it's going to generate an event called gates which will read from the row that I'm going to define now. So it could be that simple kind of four four type pattern um, that would work fine. It could be as simple as that. Okay, so same uh, with the pitches row. First, we define uh, the name of the event that will be created by the row that I'm just about to define, which will be some let's say some note values like this. Um, off the top of my head, so four pitches. And then we have the really powerful part, which is the uh, generated event patterns. This is uh, further, you can just define many rows of arbitrarily named um, sequences. Or, uh, okay, so uh, one might be, uh, usually they would be d related to your sound design, for example. So in this sound design example, um, there is some uh, some additive synthesis chema oscillators called GA oscillators. They're very simple and have a special quality to them. But one of the nice things about them is that you can morph between different analyses as you play using a parameter called morph. Um, there's also a, a time index parameter, um, which could be time index. Okay. So normally when you run a sound like that in Kima, you get those um, hot values get generated as widgets, you see. So the sequencer, though, will, will generate those values for you. So they won't, you will see them in the VCS, but they won't, you won't be able to move them because they're generated by, they'll be taking these values um, at the, and they'll be sequenced by the BPM and the rate scale and the run button so you know it's a sequencer so you're going to press run and it's going to play at a certain BPM and it's going to read through these events and the variable called pitches the hot value called pitches will take on each of these uh, values here that's the basic way of working so just to go back to this example I want I'm going to 
sequence the morph parameter from my sequencer. And so I'll add it in this generated events patterns list. Now here, the syntax is slightly different to the other two uh, because there's many rows that can be defined. So that's why uh, you have to encapsulate each, each row in. Okay, so this is syntax here. We're doing it right now. It's going to be a hash and a parenthesis. Then you, the name of the event, which in this case I want it to be morph. And then to keep things tidy, uh, I press return and I press alt and tab and that does this kind of tab, um, which Kima ignores spaces, it doesn't matter. This is just to make um, script more readable for us. So uh, uh, morph, I will have, I want to have like three stages and yeah, it does. I don't need to put as you've noticed. I don't need to put the same amount of values as there are gates. Uh, this is one of the powerful features of this sequence. So you'll see in a minute. Um, so in this case, uh, morph, and then I press return, and then I close that opening parenthesis. So you see, this layout here. I've got it quite zoomed out. Is exactly the same as doing that. Uh, it depends what what you find more readable. Um, in a simple script like this, perhaps uh, one line is okay. So I noticed also here that uh, time time index is a good one. Maybe uh, this is, seems to be like an inverse of the time index. Yeah. So we've got two oscillators. So I, I see that they both use time index. I'm going to do the same again, hash open, and I'm going to also sequence time index, which is the uh, where, where the oscillator is reading through on the wavetable. You know, minus 1 is the start of the wavetable, and minus 0 0.75 is halfway through the wavetable, and then perhaps jump halfway through to the other side, and then perhaps halfway through, and so on. So I've just created four values like that. So now we've just got these... Um, Actually, this name I'm going to call, yeah, pictures is okay, but I think sometimes, just to be clear, I like to put gen gate, like generated gate, or gen pitch, or, so, or gen morph, or so. I like to um, sometimes rename them like that, and it helps to see things. So now I'm just going to update these sounds with that new naming protocol that I just decided to do on the fly. Uh, perhaps I should have planned that beforehand, before starting the video, but at least it's good to see how somebody is indecisive. Right, so uh, let's see how this goes. Um, there's some other fields here that are generated, like this one. If you read about that, it's, it's um, another generated name that is generated uh, that takes on the values of these gates it transmits the values of those gates so the gates is just a boolean on and off thing and this one is the, like a velocity because actually these might be 0 0.5 or something uh, so we'll have a look at that sort of stuff there's lots of quite advanced tricky features you can get into um, so here's another sound, uh, another generated name called the step, which will be um, a hot value that will take on the counting of this particular instance of this sequencer. So it will be position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, and so on. So if we run this sound, let's see what happens. Okay, we've got a basic uh, sequencer here. And um, we're not hearing much. There is something coming out, but I think my speakers are a bit low. So uh, we see that the gen pitch, there it is. It's algorithmically generated. The gen gate is being generated. That gen morph value is being generated. And the gen time index is being generated in this one. So you, you see that they're kind of static, and it's a little bit curious uh, why that is and the thing is is because I've designed the uh, global sequencer after working with a lot of other sequences um, like this one the circle on and analog stuff um, 
it's I think it's what what I've tried to do is to, to create it so that this the gate this this global row here is basically um, defining when values get read from the other rows and this quickly makes a lot of beautiful interactions between the sequences so if you if you pressed if you had set all of these to be one I don't know a bunch of ones um, then it will read here we hear them already on the speakers um, and you can see it's reading every gen pitch and every gates going off every value is being read which is pretty nice but of course what we really want to do is have a way to turn these stages on and off on the fly without having to recompile the program so now we're going to do some of that syntax stuff which is what this video is about so um, we can define a row of widgets now one way to do this the really the quick, quickest way to do this is to say gate 1 gate to gate three. This is not the quickest way. This is the, the slowest way. In fact, gate four. But it's perfectly okay to do it like that. So you see, I pressed return. I did the Alt tab to indent this, and then um, let's see if that runs. It does, and we've created these faders here. The VCS just creates them and uh, algorithmically and, and tries to find a place for them on the screen. You inevitably have to organise that a bit. So those four, those four gate stages are now something I can interact with. Which is pretty cool, but of course I might want more gates than that, so I, I could copy and paste this row and keep typing, but of course uh, we're, we want to find uh, more efficient ways of doing things. So here's here's a, your first very simple uh, bit of scripting. You say gate make me eight copies of that. So. Kima's always trying to help you with syntax. You can see that the, <coughs> the colouring is not right there. It looks like a bit beige. Uh, it should be purple. So we might get an error here. We do. That's that uh, key, classic Kima error that looks really mysterious and weird, but it's almost always to do with parentheses. And it almost always to do with the fact that normal brackets should have been curlies. So in this case, uh, I've learned from experience they should be curlies, but also you see how it goes purple. So copies, if you hire, if you put your mouse over it, you see uh, Carla's guide to it. It says that copies will just make any number of copies of what you define here and add a number on the end. So this is a really nice little shortcut to building. So I don't have to copy and paste gate 01, gate 02, gate 03. I just say gate copies 8. Now in Kima, you can highlight anything anywhere and evaluate it here, right? Apple Y, edit, evaluate. I've just highlighted that phrase. So we can evaluate that little bit of script, Apple Y, and I can see that, you see, gate one, gate two, gate three, and so on. <clears throat> if I run that, we're going to have eight gate faders. There they are, lovely. And I can interact with them. Uh, so, look, that's quite straightforward to do. Um, but then you want to refine that because I had already defined gate 01 and gate 02 and gate 03, which is gate 1 and gate 01. They're different. You see, one has an O. It's a padded two digits and one has a... So there's capital for doing that and small talk for doing that as well. So to do to build a collection which is a got gate 01 or gate 02 or just anything that's a little bit more advanced than just eight copies of this okay we do something in we use small talk to build a collection 
Okay, it's really straightforward, so don't be in jail. Just try it yourself. It's just about syntax to get it right. We say 1 to 8. Well, first we need to put a curly, because you always have to put curlies when you're building collections. That's what that We don't want to get that translated to 32 integer uh, error. So one, the 1 to 8 is... It's like a, if you put parentheses around it and you see it like a sort of counter, it's, an, it, it's called an iterator, this 1 to 8. It's going to count from 1 to 8 and it's going to execute the code, the little bit of script afterwards, um, 8 times or 80 times. It doesn't really matter. It's going to count from 1 to 8. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a collection. That's what these are in this these are collections of values, right? So we're going to build a collection and it's going to have eight elements and the one to eight will go through this code in square brackets because this is just the syntax. It's all, uh, there's also a book I put in the Rhythmic Computation Lab called Small Talk, Visual Small Talk or something. If you want to read up on the syntax, it's all available there too. Um, but anyway, so we're going to do a collection. So with this square brackets is where the script that will be executed eight times lives, okay? And each time through the eight, we're going to pass... A if this letter could be anything, N, I, X, whatever you want. Um, programmers tend to use I a lot. I don't know why. That's because they're thinking of themselves a lot. I don't know. Um, so... Then you need to put this, look, I'm, I'm just doing it second nature. After a while, syntax really becomes second nature. You put a straight bar. You have to find that on your keyboard. Uh, it's a straight up bar. You don't use it very often. It's called a pipe, I think. And that separates the, uh, the variable that will be taking these values, right, from the rest of the scripts. So that's what the bar means. It's a separator. Now we're going to do the script. It's going to be gates, because that's the name of each one of these. I want it to be gates 01, gates 02. We're going to use the suffix to command, which is a, a Capitalk command, actually. You can always look up Capitalk in the reference. It's very useful to look up suffix to. There it is. There's even a suffix 3 and a suffix 4. Um, suffix to uh, adds mixtures of one and two digit numbers to the ends of event values, padding the single digit numbers with a leading zero so that it controls sorting alphabetically in the VCS and so on, right? So Carla's already put lots of examples for you to explore, um, but we're just building this code here, right? I'm just, we're just doing it really slowly. So, uh, gates, suffix two, and then I, because that's the the i is inheriting these values each time, you see, so i will be 1 the first time through, i will be 2 the second time through, i will be 3 the second time through, and so on. So you can see that the, the black, it's still black, it hasn't coloured the syntax, so we still haven't completed this syntax at all. Kima's telling us it's not at all finished. The reason is, maybe you can see it already, I mean, I opened with curly brackets, and I haven't closed. This is just there. Yeah, I just needed to close it with curly brackets. So something we do also when we're scripting a lot is do that sort of thing to make it look easy. Just Alt and Tab to indent and return and so on. So this little script is done. If we press play, we get. I had already prepared the VCS with the right type of faders for those names, so the VCS remembered that gates padded with two gets this widget here. That's quite useful. And again, just let's just take a look at this. I'll highlight it, I'll press Apple Y to evaluate, and you'll see that the code generates a collection with gates 01, gates 02, gates 03, and so on. The useful thing about doing it in the collection is that, as I showed you earlier, uh, maybe I did, uh, you could 
build that collection. Oops. Okay, put but inside the uh, the block so we can pad it again like this. Maybe a few a few tabs just to be completely over exaggerated about it like that. Okay, this is more like it. that's more like how you would do it. Right. Um, we could take that and then we could say ah. Uh, multiplied by some capital, right? Um, every second uh, yeah, every second just to give you that, right, every second um, choose a random value and round it off, you know, choose the sign of the random value. You can always hover over these commands and Kima tells you what they do. It's so useful to have inline help. You know, this so one second tick, what does that do? It creates a little clock, a little repeating gate every second. Then it uh each time that top clock ticks, it creates a random number, and then the result of that, uh if that random number is negative sign just basically rounds it off to minus one if it's negative or zero if it's zero or one if it's a positive number so that's a way of like coin flipping it's a 50 50 chance you know so um, let's say uh, what this will do is that the gates will be or well, actually you could do it this way uh, one second tick next random greater than greater than zero put that all in parenthesis greater than there we go so this will build a collection that's a little bit more complex than the other one and would take ages to type and look really messy if we evaluate it now you'll see what I mean we evaluate this collection look at this that's a crazy bit of uh, Pacarana code that's what uh, this more complex example will generate a, a real-time event value a counter which is a random number being generated on the Pacarana in machine code and it's going to multiply that with the gates so that we have in our VCS. So this is a more complex script. Um, you can probably tell what it's going to do. It means it's going to add some jitter to my to my gates. I can select gates but then every second maybe they'll be switching on and off. It's more chaotic. Yeah, that's chaotic all right. Nice. Um, so that's what we're going to do throughout all of these um, fields. You can use CapiTalk in this really powerful way. Uh, so where are we with the video? 23 minutes. So the last seven minutes I'm going to show you just briefly the extra commands that I've introduced into this environment, um, which are the which are sequencer specific and they're only things that you can do in the Never Engine Labs Glob Sequencer, Globsic, Global Sequencer. So it's like ways of dividing the clocks, ways of having different ways of uh, different approaches to looping around these rows. So you don't have to just play forwards. You can play forwards and backwards. You can play in chaotic fashions. Uh, there's in the gates. You can do fills, little trills and fills on the, or ratchet they call it sometimes in sequencer parlance you know so little trills and stuff um, and each one of these elements can be put into all of these different rows and um, the generated events pattern has, has a loads more like a controller you can assign MIDI controllers and different types of shifting and length and all that I'm going to do another video about this specifically but we'll just take a quick look at how you do it so with this gates field You've seen the sound is compiling and running perfectly as it is. But how do we add these extra options? Well, first of all, the syntax is you, you must name the generated event. Right? You can't do anything to that. This is wrong. You must leave it like it is, and then you define a row. It's really clear here in these other examples, isn't it? Um, but then after these rows, you can use this new sort of option 
option ideas in pitch you get glide as well um, which is quite nice so how it works is you do a hash and then you choose one of the options in this case uh, clock division and you can just put a, a value or no let's say loop mode because that's easy to to follow loop mode is either uh, you see here it's either um, forwards one it means forwards two means ping pong three means chaotic right so you can say loop mode for the pitch forwards and backwards yeah ping pong and the same here I can just put it after the building of the of the collection I can just say loop mode let's say uh, forwards right I'm going to just take out the uh, random jitter for the sake of this example. Now, when we run it, the pitches are going. Oh no, loop mode one is forwards and backwards. So you see the step is forwards and backwards. And um, the pitch was going. In random because three uh, two is random it starts from zero so zero is forwards one is forwards and backwards and two is chaotic randomness okay but of course this this value can also be a widget so how can I switch uh, between forwards and backwards and reverse for the gates I can just say uh, gate uh, loop mode right and same for the pitch uh, it would be a different one pitch loop mode so I can have them separated and now we'll get two new widgets in the VCS somewhere. Here they are. Oh. Gate loop mode, pitch loop mode. If I open them up, you'll see. There they are. So they come in by default as, uh, 0. Um, as 0 0.5 with a range of 0 to 1. So the range needs to be three elements. So that's 0 to 2. Counting zero, let's set, and they'll be stepped in steps of one. So that's pretty cool. Now we've defined, well, not that one, this one. You can also do it from here. It's short cut. Three, the one, two. I just right clicking on the. See the gate's chaotic and it's forwards and backwards. And then it's just forwards and the pitch is chaotic here. Um, what's cool is also to be able to define um, these to be some kind of buttons if you like. Select from list buttons. So now you know any just if you want to be reminded, you can set labels and then make a list, and then edit that list. Do you see I did that from the options menu of the virtual surface control editor? And we can say zero, or what's that? That's forwards. Uh, one, that's uh, ping pong, ping pong. And two, that's chaotic. Uh, so now they will be labeled nicely and you can jam on them a bit. You notice that the generated VCS, the generated values are appearing in the VCS everywhere. These are the gen gate, gen pits, and so on. It's pretty cool for debugging, but there will be a point where you want to just hide that stuff because it starts to get a bit complex when you're doing a lot of programming with this. So I've put this stealth mode on. You just turn it on. Uh, look, much neater. So <laughs> that really helps a lot. In the debugging and right we're up to half an hour so that's what I wanted to reach and we've got plenty more to talk about and um, I'll try and do another video soon so I hope that's working out for you see you